In this online lecture, we're going to discuss sulfonation of a benzene ring, and we're going to see that sulfonation also follows the general mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution. And that number two, the pre-step for sulfonation, involves a reaction between a Lewis acid and a Lewis base, with the pre-electrophile acting as a Lewis base and the electrophile maker acting as the Lewis acid. We're also going to see here number three, that sulfonation is reversible and the principle of microscopic reversibility applies. So let's start with our overall reaction here. This is what sulfonation looks like. We're taking a benzene ring, we're adding H2SO4, and we're putting on an SO3H group onto benzene. Let's look at our roles here. The H2SO4 is playing the role as a pre-electrophile, but he's also playing the role as the electrophile maker. We'll see how this is possible in a few minutes. This makes the SO3H the full-fledged electrophile. So let's start with our pre-step here. How does this reaction start? Well, it involves H2SO4, and what I'm going to do here is write out one of the H2SO4's full Lewis dot structure, showing all its bonds and electrons. And the other one I'll just represent as just simply H2SO4. What we're going to see here is one of them acts as the pre-electrophile and another acts as the electrophile maker. And we're going to see this pre-step is very similar to what we learned in nitration of a benzene ring. What happens here is that the electrons on one of the oxygens in H2SO4 donate to the proton here. Or in other words, H2SO4 on the right donates a proton to that OH on the H2SO4 on the left. Notice this follows our general trend here. This H2SO4 on the left is acting as the Lewis base, and the H2SO4 on the right is acting as a Lewis acid. H2SO4 happens to be a very strong acid. It has a pKa of around negative 6.5. So let's see the result of this. If the right H2SO4 donates a proton to the one on the left, then that oxygen will gain a hydrogen and will become OH2 and will have a positive formal charge on the oxygen. And the HSO4- minus is simply the conjugate base of H2SO4. And notice we have the same thing that happens in nitration of benzene. Once that OH on the H2SO4 on the left is protonated, then the OH2 falls off. Again, we're turning the OH into a better leaving group by protonating him. The result of this step right here is this. Notice that sulfur takes on a full-fledged positive charge, and this becomes our full-fledged electrophile. And then the rest is electrophilic aromatic substitution. We simply take this molecule, let's condense him down, react him with benzene here. And the first step, remember the electrons jump up and attack the electrophile here. We end up with this plus the two resonance structures. Then in the second step, we add the base. The base comes along, rips off this hydrogen. Electrons plop down here, making a new double bond and bringing us to aromaticity. And this is our product. So there it is, sulfonation of a benzene ring. And again, it follows all the steps of every other electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. However, this one has a feature that's different from the rest. This reaction is actually reversible. If you add H3O plus and 100 degrees Celsius, you can actually go from the right to the left. Or in other words, you could remove the SO3H. Like every reaction, this reaction follows the principle of microscopic reversibility. This principle just simply states that the mechanism for going, in this case, from right to left, simply just retraces the mechanism going from left to right. In other words, to go from right to left here, every mechanistic step is the exact opposite of electrophilic aromatic substitution. I just want to show you that here. Let's show the mechanism for the reverse of this reaction. In the first step here, the double bond grabs the H right here of H3O plus, and we end up with this, plus the two other resonance structures. 
Notice that's the same intermediate that we had when we were going in the forward direction for this mechanism. And just so you know who went where, this hydrogen right here is this hydrogen right here. Then in the second step here, what happens is these electrons fall down here, recreating the double bond and booting off the SO3H. Notice we're getting benzene here as a product. And as a side product, we're getting our full-fledged electrophile. Notice these steps are the exact opposite of electrophilic aromatic substitution. This again is what the principle of microscopic reversibility states. However, there's something else I'd like to show you about this principle here. Let's look at an energy versus reaction progress for our reaction, and let's also think about it in both directions. So for instance, let's say we add a benzene ring plus the SO3H electrophile. This is the forward reaction. Remember, we would have to get over some activation energy barrier to get to a intermediate. And that intermediate, of course, would look like this. And in going in this direction, our activation energy would be this amount right here. And this, of course, what you see here is the first step of electrophilic aromatic substitution. And remember, we know that there's two steps to this mechanism, so the second step would involve another hump of activation energy that we'd have to get over, which would then lead us to the product. In this case, the SO3H is added to the benzene ring. So all I'm showing you here is the energy versus reaction progress diagram for electrophilic aromatic substitution involving sulfonation. And what I want you to see here is that this would be the rate limiting step Remember how that worked in general chemistry. The higher the activation energy for a given step in a mechanism, the slower that step is, and therefore that makes it the rate limiting step of the overall mechanism. But let's see what happens when we go in reverse here. Again, starting with the right hand molecule here, the SO3H on the benzene ring, if the mechanism were to go in reverse, in other words, this way, this would be the activation energy humps that it would have to go over to get to product. Notice the first step in the reverse direction would have this right here as an activation energy. But notice even going in reverse here, you still have this activation energy as the greatest. Which means even going in reverse, this is the rate limiting step. In other words, it's the second step in the reverse reaction that's the rate limiting step. This is also a consequence of the principle of microscopic reversibility. So here's how I'd like you to think of sulfonation. Know that it's reversible and also make sure you know the necessary reagents to make it go in either direction you'd like. It would take H2SO4 to go from left to right here and it would take H3O plus and 100 degrees Celsius to go from right to left. So what have we learned here? Our key points, number one, we saw sulfonation follows the general mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution. We saw number two, that the pre-step for sulfonation involves a reaction between a Lewis acid and a Lewis base. The pre-electrophile acts as the Lewis base and the electrophile maker acts as a Lewis acid. And we also saw something unique to this reaction, and that is sulfonation is reversible and the principle of microscopic reversibility applies.